good, Julia? Yes, I believe we are good. All right. So I'll go ahead and get it started. So good morning. Uh, thank you for being here today. It is 11.01 a.m. on Thursday, November 17, 2022. And this is the scheduled time for the workshop um, regarding proposed changes to Chapter 571 of the Nevada Administrative Code. This workshop is being held in person at the Nevada Department of Agriculture at 4780 East Idaho Street in Elko, Nevada, as well as virtually via Zoom, either using either computer or telephone to ensure all wishing to, per to participate may do so. This workshop has been properly noticed and is being recorded, recorded as required by Nevada Open Meeting Law. My name is Doug Ferris and I'm the Division Administrator for Animal Industry of the Nevada Department of Agriculture. We have the following staff members in attendance with us today from the Department of Agriculture. We have Julia Miller Ketchum, Dr. JJ Guaycachia, um, Laura Morrow, and Samantha Bellwood. With that, Julia, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Hang on for just one second while I share my screen. Good morning, everyone. We'll be using some of the features of Zoom for those who have joined us through the platform. At the bottom right of your screen, you'll see a participants and chat. Click on these to open the boxes. Next, locate the participants icon and click to open. Find your name on the participant list and hover over your name. A raise hand icon will appear if you wish to speak. This is what you'll click so that, you know, that we know to call on you. Click it again to lower your hand after speaking. It's, it's still not sharing. Yeah, it's not. Same as yesterday morning. It didn't. It didn't. What share. is going on? Hang on. It's telling me I am. Is that any better? It, now we can see it. It shows a slideshow. So if you can just maximize it. Yeah. Um, the raise eye hand con will appear if you wish to speak, and that's how we'll know to call on you. Click it again to lower your hand after speaking or to withdraw the request. If you don't find the hand by hovering near your name, use the three dots at the bottom of the screen. We've muted everyone to reduce the background noise. If you wish to give a public comment, please use the hand raising feature and ensure your mic is unmuted and we'll call on you. For those participating via phone, you can raise your hand during the public comment periods or the questions period by pressing star nine. You can unmute yourself when called upon by pressing star six. If you have any technical issues during the meeting, try the following. Turn the video off to see if the connection improves, leave the video meeting and either try to rejoin or call in using the phone number and login information from the agenda. If you're having problems getting unmuted or into the comment queue, use the chat function to make your comment and this will be recorded for the record. In addition to public comments during this workshop, interested parties are welcome to submit written public comment and email to animalindustry at agri.nv.gov. Since there's no sign-in sheets for those online, as there would be at the in-persons, we'll be using the participant list. If we're unsure of your name, we may send you a chat so that we have the correct information in the meeting minutes. If you're joining us via phone, please send an email to animalindustry at agri.nv.gov indicating you participated in today's workshop or remain on the line after we close so that we can capture your information for the meeting record. For our agenda, you will see that we'll start with a period of open comment for anyone wishing to speak on concerns or to provide feedback. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes to ensure everyone can be heard and save questions for the next portion of the meeting. Following open comment, we will review the proposed changes to NAC 571, followed by time for input, questions, and clarification. 
After questions, there will be another period for additional public comments on the workshop hearing. Those who wish to speak during public comment are requested to use the hand raising feature. And when called upon, identify yourselves by name and any affiliation for the record. Again, please save your questions for after public comment at the conclusion of the review of the proposed changes. There will be time for questions and dialogue at that point once all information has been shared before we move into the next round of public comment. So now I'm going to give it to Dr. Gorkachia for review of the proposed changes. Uh, first, public. Uh, yeah, can we ask for public comment first, please, Julia? Yes. Thank you. Do we have any public comment, Delco? Okay, no, none in Elko, Julia. Any of the other Thank you. are online? I do not have any with raised hands, no. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll step through these. You guys, what I'm gonna do is we'll step through all these, make some notes in your margins, and then at the end, anything specific you wanna go back and address or talk about, uh, we can, and then we'll have another public comment period at the end. We'll get started under general provisions. Uh, you'll notice uh, in definition, health certificate, we're changing that to certificate of veterinary inspection to find. That's just to keep up with the times. Monaiasis, uh, it's just, uh, as I said yesterday, the science nerds get bored, so they got to change the names of these bugs once in a while. We'll probably do it again in three or four years, but that's the current term is trichomoniasis instead of trichomonosis. So NAC 571010, Certificate of Veterinary Inspection, means an official document that records the status, origin, destination, identification of an animal that is issued by a licensed veterinarian, credited by USDA, APSDS, in accordance with 9 CFR 161. Certificate of Veterinary Inspection as approved by the department in accordance with 9 CFR 161. 571020, it's just a change of the address and phone number. Uh, this still had the old uh, Capitol Hill address in Reno. And that phone number on this, we're bringing that up to the Sparks headquarters. 571030, horses, mules, and asses, except as otherwise provided in subsection two, reacts neg negatively to a test approved by the department. That way we're not stuck uh, saying it's ELISA, AGID. We don't know what might be on the horizon for a new test for EIA. So keep it this way, be nimble. 571035, sheep. Changing health certificate to CBI. Sub one, top of the next page, a statement by issuing veterinarian approved by the department and consistent with current federal safety program requirements, indicating that the animals in the shipment are not subject, showing signs of clinical illness or originating from an exposed infected source or non compliant flock. Sub two, now new two plus three, and or similar identification as required by the department. That's scrapey tags. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and then four changed to three. New two, all breeding rams that are six months of age or older are tested for B. ovus on a test approved by the department. Same thing, we're still using ELISA, predominantly done by Western Slope. Uh, but we don't know what's on the horizon. Maybe we'll get a better test for that someday, so we want to be ready. 571040, cattle and bison. Health certificate to certificate of veterinary inspection. Sub B for Dr. Sproutman. All female cattle and bison that are 12 months of age or older, very legible official tattoo and associated official ID or official 840 EID vaccination tag as evidence of official brucellosis, cow fit vaccination. This is for those that are selling bred cattle, et cetera. You don't, won't have to stop those cattle on the for a tattoo anymore if they're using the EID, the RFID, Brucellosis tag that will count the same as a tattoo. Is that that's what happened when he came to that? Or leaving or whatever. Okay. Uh, Wyoming's already there. Um, New Mexico is not requiring tattoos to be read because we're a free state. So the, those changes are starting to come again because of the IDs. If you're trading within the state too, this, this will work within the state. Because you will see farther on, you still have to be official Catholic vaccinated to sell a cow in the state of Nevada. The EIDs will work instead of reading tattoos. You're welcome. Yeah, 
But the old ones will also work also. Oh, no, we're going to work. Yeah. The old ones, still, <laughs> the old, the old ones will still work for now. If we do anticipate a USDA APIS rule to be proposed maybe in January, that will start phasing those out over time. So we just want to be ready for that. All right. Uh, sub one. I'll, question on phasing out over time, meaning that then I, I, I'm not writing the rule oh. for USDA. I see. So okay. I'll let wait like the rest of us will know what it looks like okay. in July or rather in January. We hope. Okay. Okay. Sub one. All sexually intact cattle of any age moving from a designated surveillance area unless approved by the department based on seasonal grazing. What this means, that exposure is due to elk on the feed ground in those areas predominantly. We do know of commuter herds that go into or adjacent to the DSA. They're there June, July, August, and come back. No exposure to elk, no exposure to those feed grounds. Other states are not requiring those to be bled to go back and forth as long as there's no exposure to the elk. So the, the department wants to reserve that right. If we don't feel there's an exposure, we won't make them bleed every year going back and forth. That's what that is for. Sub so two, all sexually intact bison. Uh, so those will still need to be tested. Any cattle or bison originating from a state or herd not listed as brucellosis free or brucellosis status may present an increased disease risk as determined by the department. Um, again, if that changes, we won't be able to change rapidly, not have a list of those states. Cattle and bison react negatively to a test for tuberculosis as follows. Within 30 days before entry into Nevada for all sexually intact dairy cattle six months of age or older, that's the current rule, the federal rule, we'll just bring it up to speed with that. All bison six months of age or older, any cattle or bison originating from the state of herd not listed as TB free, the livestock may present increased disease risk as determined by the department. Two, within the 12 months before entry into Nevada, all sexually intact cattle 12 months of age or older entering Nevada for events, rodeo shows, or exhibitions. That's again, the USDA is keeping those rules in place for rodeo cattle that are adults. And so we are gonna do the same for tuberculosis. E, all cattle originating from Mexico shall be branded with the letter M on the upper right hip. They've moved away from that job or similar permanent brand as approved by the department and consistent with current USDA requirements. Sub three, all Mexican cattle used in a rodeo, roping, exhibition, sporting, or similar kind of event shall be tested for tuberculosis on an annual basis after entry into the United States. Testing records shall be in the possession of any owner, manager, agent, or representative in possession of these cattle at all times. Testing records shall include all official ID numbers, which coincide with the Mexican origin cattle in possession. So four official Mexico ID ear tags must be retained after entry into the United States. So five official ID must be individually listed on the CBI for all Mexican origin cattle of any age. Only steers and spade heifers may be imported into Nevada, Mexican steers or spade heifers. Seven, Mexican origin cattle must not be co-pastured or co with any other tuberculosis susceptible livestock. Go back up to two. We're talking about uh, events, rodeo shows, so forth. And this is where we got into the problem here before. Explain to me the programs in cattle out of California for the cutting and the monohog. So that is. So, so what can, is there a change there? That, so those will not be sexually uh, intact cattle. We don't think and if, if they are sexually intact cattle over 12 months of age and they've been used for those events somewhere else, we would make them TB tested if they've been coming with something else. How about yeah. if they haven't been used for no. an event? No. And they're 15 months old. So then they're not really. Um, so we're talking beef cattle. So what we're, yeah. what we're talking about here is we have some urines that are coming in and they're going to be cut. Uh, and they're going to be the only cattle that show up at a facility. They can be held there, not commingled with anything else in back. They don't need to be TB tested. Now, if they've been commingled somewhere else, if they've been at Cal Poly or they've been somewhere else mixed with everything else and cut, we're going to make them TB tested because we're not sure if they had Mexicans mixed with them. Thank you. All right, game, uh, let's see where we got game for varying wild animals. You see we just struck some stuff from this. 
uh, the, the survey day and that kind of thing. We changed those <coughs> rules three sessions ago um, at the legislature. They no longer apply to 571. They're 501 uh, with wildlife now, and they're just not allowed. Dogs and cats. Now, this is for rabies. We changed up from three months to 12 weeks to be consistent with the uh, national compendium of animal rabies control. And then there's a hyperlink uh, there where you can find that if you're a small animal practitioner wanting to know when you can rabies vaccinate. Transportation of livestock stops for inspection. It says the health certificate must have been issued within the previous 30 days or as directed by the department. There's a, if we have a disease outbreak going on of anything, we can shorten that time. We did it uh, recently with rabbits with rabbit hemorrhagic disease. We made that within seven days. So if we have a reason to believe there's a disease going on somewhere, uh, we don't want that health paper 30 days old. We may say, no, you need to look at those cattle within the last five days, seven days, whatever it is, just to be sure. So that's why we put that as directed by the department in there. So we have that flexibility. Livestock being transported only within Nevada unless directed otherwise as indicated by a holder quarantine order issued by the department, uh, EIA, that kind of thing. If you happen to do get a TB or brucellosis, they go on that would apply there. Livestock for use in rodeos. A person shall not ship, transport, or otherwise move into Nevada for use in a rodeo, roping exhibition, sporting or other similar kind of event, unless it has a, then you'll notice right here, it still says health certificate. We missed that. We're going to change that to CBI uh, at some point under one, and you know, it's not reflected today. Two, following cattle and bison rant negatively to a test for brucellosis within the 30 days before entry into Nevada. Any sexually intact cattle moving from a DSA unless approved by the administrator. All bison over six months of age. Any cattle or bison originating from a herd that uh, is not brucellosis free or presents an increased disease risk as determined by the department, including the DSA. Any cattle or bison originating from a herd or location is not tuberculosis free or presents an increased risk as determined within 12 months before entering Nevada. Uh, all sexually intact cattle and bison 12 months of age, all roping steers, all Mexican origin cattle. Again, if they're coming from a location that is not free. So this gets back to what we were just talking about, Sam. We addressed it here as well to make it a little bit more clear. 571-105, public livestock auctions that hold a current federally approved agreement may have additional provisions allowed for animal entry as detailed in that agreement and approved by the department. Nevada's two public livestock <laughs> auctions do have agreements with the department and with the USDA, and so they may be able to receive unvaccinated cattle, untested cattle held in their quarantine pans for sale to slaughter only, et cetera, and those will be reflected in their uh, individual approved agreements. 531-120 quarantine imposed with no certificate or permit issued. Animals or livestock entering the state without a valid CBI or other approved certificate and a permit, if required, shall be held in quarantine at the risk and expense of the owner. Emergency importation of livestock. In the event of a natural disaster, fire, or some emergency evacuation incident, the department may temporarily waive entry permit requirements and allow the approved shipment to be imported into the state. All, amount, all animals in that shipment must travel directly to a location approved by the department and shall not be isolated from other livestock, or shall be, excuse me, isolated from other livestock and remain under immediate quarantine until released. We're seeing more and more of that as, you know, we might have fire evacuations, et cetera. We'll designate the area where they can go, make sure that they're held in quarantine there, and then go back. We're not going to make a jump through all the hoops. No co-mingling. 571-300, a person may not sell, use, or distribute in this state a serum vaccine back from veterinary biologic or other biological product which is used as a diagnostic agent or used in the prevention or treatment of disease of animals or livestock unless it has been produced in accordance with a permit, authorization, or licensure granted by USDA, the department, the U.S., or an agency authorized by the department. Just kind of cleaning that up. That's already in there. We just kind of added some additional language for clarification. Restricted vaccines or other products, sub-5, any vaccine bacteriolo bacteriological or bacterial product that could present a hazard to animals or livestock or to the livestock industry of this state as determined by the department. So if we determine that something is unsafe or we, we're lear we learn from USDA or someone, hey, there's a product out there that is causing disease, then we'll have that ability to say we're not going to let it into the state. Vaccination of females, um, cattle or bison, or change of ownership. 
female cattle or bison that are at least four months of age and not more than 12 months of age must be official brucellosis calf foot vaccinated for brucellosis before any change of ownership occurs in Nevada, unless the cattle or bison are sold and immediately transported to a qualified feedlot or out of state. We do have other states that will take non-vax and they can go there. Female cattle or bison that are more than 12 months of age must be official brucellosis calf foot vaccinates before any change of ownership occurs in the state of Nevada unless the cattle or bison are identified as spayed in a matter approved by the administrator, sold for slaughter directly to or through an approved public livestock auction as authorized by the administrator, sold immediately transported to destination outside the state, um, consigned for finishing the feedlot is registered by the USDA. Three, entry of adult vaccinates and or adult vaccination is not permitted in Nevada without prior authorization of the administrator. We're not allowing any of that right now. At some point in the future, if an administration chooses to do that, uh, it will be up to the department and they can do that. So boy, this goes to where those RFID tags will come in because by definition, official brucellosis catheter vaccinate will be reflected by the RFID tag. EIA, equine infectious anemia, uh, provide diag uh, positive diagnosis made by using auger gel you know, diffusion test, Coggins test, or other test approved by the department. So here's a prime example where we're using a lot of ELISAs and we won't even uh, uh, reflect it in here. Samples collected for the purpose of testing shall only be collected by a licensed veterinarian at the owner's expense. A complete positive identification of the horse must be made by the veterinary at the time of the blood sample collected on a form approved by the department. We're seeing more and more digital forms, not just a stick figure. Trichomoniasis. Um, every time trichomoniasis is new in here, I'm not going to read it. You guys can figure out that. So, old order means an order issued pursuant to NRS 561-295-2 to exposure for infection. Uh, we did not have exposure in there it was only infection in the past negative test result negative test result means an official laboratory has determined an official sample to be negative for the presence of trichomonas fetus official laboratory defined uh, means a laboratory approved by the department follows official protocol to confirm by preliminary chain reaction or a test approved by the department whether an official test is non-negative or negative or T fetus test approved by the department at this time still does include culture. Official tag means a tag authorized by the department and approved by the administrator that is preferably in the right ear of a bull or veterinary technician under the indirect supervision of an accredited veterinarian to indicate the year of the bull's most recent official test. We JJ tag. Yes, sir. Is non-negative the new term for positive? Yes, and we get into that here in a minute. What's actually defined out here in just a second? Well, I mean, maybe it's not the definition, but why? I, I mean. So we we are seeing that uh, for a true positive on these CT values, they got to be a certain level, and we are seeing amplification of DNA or RNA in some of these. So we know that the organism is in there, but we're not finding the complete organism. So therefore, that animal will be considered non-negative. You can take the chance of retesting, but we are considering them positive, okay, non-negative. See a lot of that uh, to Dr. Spratling at, at USDA, APHIS right now, EIAs, um, curoplasmosis, everything, if they're a suspect, they're on it. You can't call them positive, but there's something in there that is that DNA. So does it fill the role of suspect and positive? Yes. And rather than getting into the weeds of what is suspect, it's just non-negative. Okay. Official test for trick means uh, again a test by PCR or another or other test approved by the department. The test sample is collected by an accredited veterinarian or a technician under the indirect supervision of an accredited veterinarian. I felt it was important that we did have that in there because that is how they are doing that, and that is approved by the Practice Act in Nevada. Positive test result defined. Positive test result means an official laboratory has determined an official test sample to be non-negative for the presence of e fetus. 571-630, test chart defined. 
Uh, here it is signed by an accredited veterinarian. Uh, those charts can't be can't be signed by that technician because there are regulatory, which certifies that a bull has been subjected to an official test for trick. Total confinement operation defined. Total confinement operation means a dry lot feeding operation where none of the sexually intact strike active cattle are allowed access to pasture, etc. It's just changing that terminology in 636, 640. Registration of accredited veterinarian and veterinary technician to collect samples for official test for trick. An accredited veterinarian or technician under indirect supervision of an accredited vet shall register with the department to collect samples for trick testing if he or she has completed a certification program approved by the department. 571-641, annual trick testing requirements. NRS 571-140, 571-150. Trick testing season begins on September 1st of each calendar year, continues until August 31st of the succeeding year. All test eligible bulls entering or located within the state shall be tested negative, utilizing official test for trick annually during the trick testing season prior to being allowed access to female cattle on, or I should, I should say, or by August 31st of each trick testing season, whichever occurs first. Bulls that are to be turned out on public grazing allotments shall be tested for trick by August 31st of each testing season or 45 days prior to turnout on a public grazing allotment, whatever occurs first. Bulls consigned directly to the qualified feedlot for finished feeding for slaughter or directly entering slaughter channels are exempt. And testing requirements. 642 sub A. Uh, as tested negative for trick is evidenced by an official test performed on a specimen taken from a test eligible bull by an accredited veterinarian within 60 days prior to entry and has not had contact with female cow from the time of the test to the time of import. Uh, just want to make sure we just have some that, well, they were negative, and yeah, then you turn them out with the cows and then you sold them to somebody. So that kind of defeats the purpose. Is accompanied by a CBI, just changing that terminology. Again, an official test for trick, terminology, terminology. Instead of by saying uh, right here, now this is key. Test eligible from a herd is tested positive for tick trick during the 12 previous 12 months. Verif uh, verifies the test eligible as tested negative by official test for trick on each of its two most recent official tests. If you're coming from a herd that has been positive, it was three going to two with PCR. It doesn't have to be individual. It can be pulled and also. You'll see where it says that the, on the top of the next page, the official test that identified the positive bull in the herd can be used to fulfill this requirement as long as the test eligible bull applying for entry tested negative. What this means, you got a pool of 20, you pull them out, there was a positive bull. You test them under 19 one more time, you're good. You don't have to test them under 19 two times to get them into the state because that first test that found them cleared those first 19. This came up from what I understand from a year ago, there was some confusion on some hurts. So we're just trying to clean that up. Thank you. You're welcome, he said it. Now I'm still on my chair. Trick. And I'm just changing the terminology. 571-644, testing of commuter bull that is <coughs> eligible bull application for commuter pit, uh, permit. The owner or DC of a commuter bull that is a test eligible bull shall ensure this commuter bull as tested negative by official test for trick between September 1st and August 31st. That's just to make the testing year the same. Official year of the trick, just terms. These are all just terms again, all the way down to 648. Instead of specimen, we call it sample in 46. And 648, added public livestock auction on your stockyard. Doing the same. Here and then a new A, any untested bull originating from an infected or exposed herd is subject to a quarantine or hold order and must first comply with the conditions of the quarantine or hold order order. So they can go directly to slaughter, but obviously if they're they're not gonna be able to go anywhere else if they're under hold. Trick trick. 652 under under indirect supervision of accredited vet. Official test for trick again. Place official tag in the ear with preference given to the right ear. And, and the reason we're doing that, and I explained it yesterday. And it goes back to what we were talking about, Lily, is they put as they put this new rule out, 
they're going to want those RFID EID tags in the left ear, preferably. So we're going to try to move our state regulatory tags to that right ear, so we don't have everything piled uh, in that same ear. Because you know, none of these ranches need another bangle tag or a Christmas tree of any kind, and the rest of these either. So. An accredited veterinarian may tag a bull entering the state with an official test tag. If he or, she, he or she receives a trick test chart for the bull uh, from an accredited veterinarian who tested the bull outside of the state. So that means if we know that the bull was tested in Idaho, for example, he has a secondary uh, ID, he lost that tag. We can confirm that that secondary ID in that bull does match. We can go ahead and put a tag in, even though I have to test him again. Official ID. Uh, either a metal noose tag or 840 RFID shall be recorded with corresponding official tag for additional proof of testing in the event of official test tag is lost. Almost everything's got another ID in it. Please write that down uh, so that when they lose that tag and the neighbor calls, we can go back and pull that tag as well and line it up in the system um, and show that it was in fact tested. Trick, an, uh, an accredited veterinarian who's responsible for sample collection for trick. Um, within 48 hours of his or her receiving a positive test on respective bull shall report the results to administrator, director, and the owner of the bull. Passed by the bulls infected and asserted infect as an infected herd. The director will immediately place an infected bull and search infected herd under a hold order and ensure the administrator or their designee or a federal animal health official conducts an happy investigation on that infected herd. As used in this section, federal, uh, we don't have to do that, we didn't change it. Four, trichomoniasis is a reportable disease in Nevada. We wanted to add that in, it wasn't added in there, and the uh, state legislature years ago under Dr. Larusa actually made that change. 571-656, each test eligible bull in an infected herd tests negative on two consecutive official tests for trick within eight months after the herd is placed under the hold order. The official test that identified the positive bull, same thing as before, can be used. So same rules as importing the bull. Uh, if you test your battery of 50 bulls and you have three positives, those 47 have one clean test. The only need is the subsequent test just needs to be clean on those 47. Each test eligible bull uh, of trick by inner slaughter channels within 30 days of a positive test. So by that, we do have approved uh, yards in the state of Nevada, qualified feed yards that they can go to, or they can move out of state uh, to a feeding facility uh, as well. But we want that move within 30 days because they have a tendency to not stay put. Can we get access to that list of approved? It changes, but you can call and we can tell you who they are. Yes. The test element. And, and the reason for that, uh, Dr. Dr. Bradley, sometimes there's change of ownerships or some people may opt out. And it, so it's an annual deal that we have to do. Before a test eligible bull may be certified to be clear of uh, trick, test eligible bull must receive a negative test on an official test for each of the class two. Again, uh, for trick, the sample for each test have been collected at least seven days apart or as soon as you can rebuild the trust. The owner or lease of an infected herd may consign any cattle from the herd to a slaughter channel. All right, new language here. All cattle from an infected herd or entering a slaughter channel shall remain under quarantine until moved to slaughter. All infected cattle being moved from the premises of origin to a slaughter channel shall move on a form or other documentation approved by the department. This can be a brand inspection. It can actually be uh, your movement permits. If you're going to the local sale barn, just make sure the yardage ticket reflects for slaughter only. And then have a copy of that sent and that uh, will suffice to be released. As a condition of release, a hold order director may require additional testing within one year of release. Trick again, uh, if an epi identifies a neighboring herd is at risk. So that's your exposed herds. Trick, sample collected after the possible exposure occurred. So you have eight months from, uh, from the time you're notified of that exposure or when it occurred to test that bull. And then uh, yesterday, we a couple typos coming up here. We cannot change them because we've already advertised this, put the language out, we will change them uh, before a, a final version of this. These tests eligible bulls determined to be clear of trichomonosis. This is within or is released to a slaughter channel that needs, that eight months needs to remain in uh, for 
because it's not in the writing, but we won't make that fix as we go in sub three below. Except as otherwise provided in subsection five, the owner of lease of an exposed turf shall not lease or transfer ownership of any builder cow or heifer that is 18 months of age or older from the herd during the period in which the herd is under hold. Those of us have been at this for a while, then we've been from 20 to 12 to 6 back to 18. So we can look at the that. I know, but that's when there's interruption. We know. The system with other states is really why we the surrounding states have all gone to 18. The owner and lease of an exposed herd may consign instead of release, consigns. Trick, trick. All right. And then here, um, is identified by a method approved by the department. So you don't have to put the hot V brand on. You don't have to move on the BS-127 form. Uh, again, so what we've done uh, recently in the past few weeks, we know that bull's trick tag number. We're having the brand inspector who does the brand for those to go to slaughter, go to a sale barn, whatever, write that trick tag number on that brand inspection in the description, and we'll say for slaughter only. And that is working for us. Thanks, Jim. You know, sent, <laughs> you're proud of it now. It's sent by direct movement within 30 days after you receives a positive test result to a slaughter channel. In fact, cattle being moved from the premise of origin to slaughter channels shall move on a form or other documentation approved. Uh, segregate, and again, it's just trick about segregate the bull from all female cattle housed on the qualified feedlots. So again, if this is going into one of our qualified feedlots, we make sure we enter that agreement with them, they understand. That bull can't be put in with a bunch of feeder records or anything else. Okay, 571, 662, uh, additional testing. This was all struck because we addressed it in other parts of the regulation. Talked about being conclusive. That's where we got into the non negative, et cetera. Handling the specimen collected from the bull, credit as veterinarian. Uh, shall use only an official laboratory to test a sample collected from the bull, ensure that the, the sample arrives at the official laboratory within a time frame and condition designated by the department as to conduct an official test. There is a new test, um, probably hear about it down at the uh, CACCA meeting. Um, they're a lot more stable, they're using tubes and they can actually don't have to be frozen, uh, keep them refrigerated. They're saying five to six days and a lot more sensitive. Um, probably the company was going to call you, but I don't know if you did last night or not. You guys see yourself on it. So, but that's why we wanted to open that up. All Everybody's starting to jump on the bandwagon trying to create uh, some more tests uh, that are more cost efficient and uh, also a little bit more stable. So, that flexibility. 571, 667, diseased animals. I want to be clear, sub one is all diseased animals here. Uh, limitation of transport, transfer of ownership. Any owner, lease or manager of animals or livestock are subject to an epi investigation, old order, or disease quarantine by the department may be denied brand inspections or other services as directed by the administrator or state quarantine officer. This applies to everything from high path even influenza to brucellosis to trick, to EIA, or whatever. The only way we can stop animals moving in and out is to deny that entry sometimes or those other ones to move out when we establish a control zone. So that's what that is in there for. What's that about? Oh, yes, thank you. And I do also want to make clear as directed by the administrator or state quarantine officer. State quarantine officer is not the state, is not the state veterinarian in the state of Nevada. It is the director of the Department of Agriculture by statute. So you can't holler at me, you gotta holler at Henry, the director. Any owner, lessee, or manager of livestock who does not meet the annual requirements set forth in 571-641 may be denied brand inspections or other services as directed by the administrator or state quarantine officer. Sub two is specific to trick. Sub one is for all. That's it. Individual comments, questions on here. We did capture some yesterday as well. We made those notes. Just trying to move things. It's hot in here. I'm trying to move things. I think all of my colleagues in the industry have known my feelings about animal tests, mandatory tests. And I, I still feel, after 47 years of practice and learning medicine, 
example, specifically in deep water, that with a little bit of cleanup, the existing rules for testing with proper uh, administration and, and uh, compliance would be at the, get the same set of goals. That being so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with the changes of this, of this document compared to what we were looking at six months ago or And I think it's, it's sufficiently broad that gives you the latitude to do things with, with any given case. But sometimes we get too confined by having everything in, in regulation or in statute and then you have no latitude to go outside of that. So I think, I think you've done a very good job of making specific or sufficiently broad, but yes, specific word that needs to be in those locations. So I would applaud the, the department for that. Thank you. Yeah. I think your the changes you've made for getting off quarantine are, are good, getting off a whole order. Like uh, idea of exposed herd, we cleaned up that language, you know, and I, I think it, it does give that, that broad look that you can go ahead and decide who is this actually exposed and who is not. If you were trying to define it by fence lines and yada, 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 which would be specific. Uh, I think still open debate as to whether it needs to be a, a 12 month or an 18 month rule, this, this test eligible. You know, we all know that they're, they're for sure sexually active at 12, at 12 months, but if that's going to put us in compliance with other states, fine. And I, I am assuming that additional testing for a, you know, a positive rule, but you eliminate that whole thing. That the, you know, basically when they're positive, they're positive. Is that correct? That's right. That's, that's what the state of Nevada is saying. No, excuse me, non negative. And, uh, and I think that's probably the right way right. It, it was too confusing to come So all that all that being said, you know, as a, as a credit veteran who does a lot of cook testing and a lot of dealing with this disease, I I'm gonna be whatever is passed and approved. I'm glad with that. And push. That's my blind bit. There you go. Any any other specifics? And again, we will have some more public comment at the end for the specifics. Think about anything else last night? Put it on your pillow and close it Oh, yeah, I've got it. I've got I told it. you. Yeah, I've got it. So, but I don't want to, anybody else want to say something because I had to say yesterday, so I've already done a lot. So, anybody else? JJ, on, on the 571 648, it talks about disposition from a, a hold order herd. So, is that your way of, of disposing of the females? Because, you know, if you look at the, you know, the, the big, you know, litany of this is based on, you know, disposing of bulls that are non-negative or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, I mean, what about the females from the very same herd? So 648, so. It was right at the top of the page, all cattle from the infected herd and entering the slaughter channels for me. Uh, so that's not 649. What, what number are you on? 656. Six, 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 okay. All right. This is starting to become a number soon. No, I understand. I, I can help with time with yourself. So, but I guess my question is what is the female disposition from an affected herd or a herd under a whole herd? You know, I don't, I don't really see that here. And maybe I'm missing it or else it's under that. You know, that one print sentence that says that all cattle from an affected herd shall be remain under quarantine until moved to slaughter. Right. So that, that just means that if you are under a quarantine herd, uh, then that, those cattle can only go through slaughter channels. They can't be sold for reproductive purposes until you clean up that hole. But how, I mean, how are you going to clean up those females? That I mean, are you going to have to? You're saying that they'll go through and be crate tested, and all the open ones will go through the slaughter channel? That's up. To, that is up to your management and up to your veterinarian's management. <coughs> Twenty years ago, we had that conversation. We were sitting at GBC. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. In that little tiny room, and we said, "Okay, if you're not going to be able to sell any." Those cows have to be pregnant. If they're open, they got to get their head cut off. And that fell very, very flat in this industry. Well, that's true, but I, I mean, I'm just trying no. to understand. So the answer is no. The answer is you clean up the your way walls. these breaks are written and you, the way they are today and the way they're proposed to be. If you have trick, you clean it up. The day that release comes off that computer to you, you can sell cows. 
not to slaughter it through so entirely. I don't know how you guys, you know, we can sit here and look at this as legitimate. You know what I mean? If you're, what you're saying is, after you get the release order, you can you know, pull a pin on the end and throw those if you, emails that have aborted. And if you wish to, then by all means, we'll put it in there in a subsequent workshop. If you wish to bring that language back, we will put that in there and we will float that out there. If that is the wishes of some that want to attempt to do that, we're here to listen to you guys and and take input from everybody and see if we can come up with the best best way to go forward. I just know that we tried it in the past and it was not well received. And other states aren't doing it either. No, I mean, the state went from Idaho came down, fought the mountain, and well, came here to tell us that- Minus South Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota, South Dakota, though, is dead. They died, period. So, um, can I, can I make a comment on, right. on, on what you're, the topic you're bringing up? That, you know, I think at that point, if you had if been determined, this is all based in all the regulation, pull order, release from, put on, getting off, is all based on pushing on the boat. Mm -hmm. And we all know that's only half of the equation. Literally only half of the equation. And I have clients who does a very good job on the bull end of it, and clients who do a very excellent job on the cow side. Yeah. And without both those parts of the equation, we're not going to we're not going to get it cleaned up. But as a regulatory matter, I think it's really I, I think it would be a real mistake to get the a, a regulating agency involved with, with the female side of the equation. Once you've been declared positive, I think it's it's up to you and your veterinarian to look at all the possibilities and the and the weak spots and the holes in, in that particular management of that herd. Try and clean it up. The, the gold testing is basically a signal of what's going on. It's a red flag for other things that we have to deal with. I, I just I would really be against any regulation on the female side of this equation. It could, it, I mean, that is a, you know, you're asking for a lot of a lot of problems to start going down. That's true, but I mean, but with the same set, with the same breath, you said you don't support the regulations. That you feel that, that we don't need the mandatory trick testing regulation True. at the beginning. True. So, True. so I and I agree with that. I don't. I don't believe. I think that the the Department of Agriculture is, you know, I mean, three years ago, JJ, we sat in Wilmette and I asked you how many herds or the, how long herds have been under quarantine or trans hold order, and you said fifteen years. So, are there herds today that have been under hold order for eighteen years? So, you know, I mean, I think what we're doing is we're regulating everybody at, at, at the expense of everybody for those herds that is exactly what Dr. Bradley said, that we haven't gone back, the agency has not taken a hard look at those herds that are under a hold order and clean them up. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you don't have to have a PhD in infectious diseases to know that having herds that are under a hold order, you know, those, those cows get out. They, they, Problems radiate outward, and uh, so I, I don't. I personally, I, I just think that I wish we, you know, I think this regulation would have more credibility with the industry if we'd gone three years ago and started working hard on those herds that are under hold order. And those are, if you said no, they're all cleaned up, you know, two years, and uh, that's all clean. I think this, you know, we might be having a different outlook on this. But as it is now, right now, I, I can say I, I don't. Support mandatory trick testing just because of the fact that we haven't taken care of the problems in the past. So, and the other issue that you know, I have sat through meeting after meeting, we talked about the Department of Agriculture, you know, holding up commerce. I mean, I hope that you know, in your mind, as an educated guy, you can see this being a you know, work for the industry and not people basically not being able to turn their bulls out because they can't get their bulls or trick test them. But I mean, I, I don't know. I, maybe it'll work. You know, I, I'll tell you, I do not know if that's the case or not. But I can tell you that, you know, if, if the agency holds it as a holding up commerce because they can't, we can't get these bulls tested, that, you know, that kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of what we're trying to do. So, so a couple of questions uh, or comments, I guess, on that. You know, as we did change the, the annual trip testing season to 12 months in order to help accommodate that uh, people could get tested. Um, it was narrowly before. Uh, back to what Dr. Spratling was saying about regulating. 
uh, females. I will tell you that New Mexico is uh, regulating that and cannot import uh, any cattle uh, into that state if trick has been found in that area in the last 12 months. So as an accredited veterinarian, you have to sign the health paper that they are originating from a herd in an area that has not had trick in it. And they also, uh, in New Mexico, even slaughter bulls are being tested for trick prior to getting there. Head cut off. They go to the center barn, they test them. They're trying to figure out exactly where it's at and where it's coming from. So there are other states that are taking a lot harder approach. The other thing, uh, you know, that, that some ranches that have been under quarantine for extended periods of time, I did look when, when I just recently came back, and there have been no adjacent herds to them for whatever reason um, that have tested positive. So Maybe it's all confined there, or maybe they're just under hold uh, as a contact from some point in the past and never tested out. But in your comment to teeth, 571667, is that attempt to put those teeth in there? Because if we don't have it, <coughs> we don't have any teeth. You have to be able to deny those guys the right to move um, and, and to make them test, or otherwise they're just going to keep doing it. But see, how does this whole order work? I mean, so they can't sell their, how are they still able to sell cattle? Because they could sell through slaughter channels. So they're selling all calves, et cetera. They're selling everything under 18 months of age because that's how it currently reads. And we're reading here as long as they're not over 18 months, they can sell them. So steers and heifers under how about 18 months. requiring that they have to sell to a certified people? That requirement you know, isn't in there. Um, because they're under 18 months, they're being able to move to other states. But I guess that's the thing. If you're wanting to try to get these people out of hold orders, it would be the people that are under hold order that if the 18 month goes away, you know, goes away and it's, hey, if you're not going to follow the rules here because you're put under a hold order, then the slaughter channel is it has to be a certified feedlot. And I know those cows will, the cows in the field to get some nuts. On there, Julia, did you capture that comment as well? And I, I'll just say that you're going to get right back to what Mr. McCleary just said. Inhibiting commerce, if you start telling someone where their market can be, but maybe that's where we want to go. Um, we're just taking notes. Well, now the other thing, though, that I was thinking too is that, okay, so you said that you these people that have been under hold order for 15 months, the, the so look, 15 years, years, I mean, the location that they are. They have not had trick issues in that area for. Okay. So, see, in my mind, those people then that are in that hold area, they're they're managing their trick issue themselves, correct? They're probably getting rid of their open cattle, and they're probably getting rid of bulls of the underage, not keeping them to the way old. So they're they're managing it already. So why are they still under hold order? I mean, I would think that if an area has been, you know, that there could be language in there too that says, okay, these people aren't complying. They, they, you, you can have the slaughter channel the way it is and not change it with the comment I just made prior. But it's like, well, if they've been under hold order and now that area is clean for five years, I mean, you could put a time frame on that. And if, if it's clean for five years, then those people are taking care of it. That's why we, for us, like, we don't really need mandatory trick tests because we can take care of trichomoniasis without having the mandatory trick, or without having the annual trick test for bulls up there. And so that, those people that, they must, they must be doing it. I'm going to say that there are, and we brought this up yesterday, so there are people that choose not to test, and we don't find them for two or three years, and then we find them. There's, there's a, there are exceptions to the rule, and I just brought those up, uh, with a couple entities that have been under hold for a long time, but I will tell you that they are an exception to the rule. Usually these guys that don't test, they continue to come back up and they end up as a contactor. You know, I'll, I'll just be up front. I have two of them this morning who are identified to me. These are contactors. I know them well because I knew them six years ago. We make a test once, they haven't had a test charge in five years. And that's another thing we can have. Can I bring that up? Sure, sure. And that's whatever you want. Yep, yep. Um, okay. That's the other thing. If I if I put under holes and I test my bulls. I'm told to test my, you know, I, I'm, I didn't have the positive, but a neighbor did. So then I'm the neighbor and so, okay, I test my bull, right? And I have a positive. 
Then I clean up my voice, correct? Mm -hmm. I get rid of that positive, then I retest, mm -hmm. now I have negative voice. Mm -hmm. So then am I released off that white order? Okay. But then I turn my bulls out to the exposed to the cows. Now that's where the sticking point is. Because if I don't get rid of my open cows, obviously I could bring it back to bull, correct? So how about putting it in place that after those bulls have been exposed, now they have to be retested after exposure. Because then once that help say, hey, okay, obviously it's within your herd because now you know, if you have a if I have a positive show up. Mm -hmm. After my exposure, and with the language in, in here, that isn't doesn't seem like that would maybe show up. So if it was put language like this, like that. <laughs> well, but but I've been doing yeah, that whole order. See, if if I test them, that's the problem. It, it's not six word one isn't saying it's after exposure. Because well, I just think it's a whole test every single year. Well, but see, that's, right. what, that's what I don't think is right. That's, yeah, because I'm against mandatory trick testing. If I'm able to get, take care of my trick, the trick issue by managing my herd, by getting rid of open cows, not keeping bulls till they're very old, things like that. I mean, we got trick years ago, back in the 70s, so we know what this is like. But we, ch we changed our practices completely once that happened. We totally changed it. It's, it's not for the people at this table as much as it's those that aren't here that aren't doing it. Right, but what I'm saying is, is to help to help figure out that okay, no, you still have trick in your herd. You make the the regulation need it's not mandatory annually. It's that all right, you have the exposed, you have it all, a positive bull. You've tested them. Okay, now they're negative. You got rid of that positive bull. Now I have negative bulls, but you got to let me get exposed to them again. Right. What's your time frame after they get exposure? I mean, are you gonna pull your holes out and retest two months after? Well, that's what what's the best thing that they that's you know that's the thing. Yeah. Okay, if you're on the mountain, your hole's been out for two months, and who's gonna be able to get those back in? So now it's a little bit of a cornice nest going there. But after when your bulls come back up, so it's almost that one year later would be the time frame to test. Which would be fine. We're just saying, okay, you 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 brought this up yesterday, JJ, um, that you were thinking maybe uh, test for three years. So then we were thinking about for the hotspot areas. Uh, for the hotspot areas, you brought up that that option thought process, and so we thought, well, okay, if you test your bulls clean, your quarantine, or you test clean, okay, you put them with, you don't get off your quarantine right there, mm -hmm. because you, then you put them back, you use them for your earth the next year. Then you test them just like in this season, it's a year long season, so you have all year to test them. They have to test clean. If they don't test clean, you're still under quarantine. And so then you have to test them after you use them again the next year. But if you use them and they come back clean, that kind of shows that your birds, your cows are clean. And like I say, you kind of brought up something, not the same thing, but you have to. So if you go to look at it, 571-656, that last sub five, at the top of that second page, that's exactly what we're trying to do there. Is what you're talking about, really. Yeah. As a condition of release, the director may require additional testing within one year. It seems we, that we maybe that it would be, it would be no, this is you can't get off of this unless you do retest after you've exposed those those bulls to the cows because people are worried about the cow side. And you, so are you proposing change made as shall require additional testing within one year? Because just like you mentioned yesterday, your hot spots mm -hmm. are showing up again, correct? Mm -hmm. After people have been taken off a hold order because they have negative bulls. They think they're done, they just test their bulls and they're done and they go away until they get exposed again. And this keeps them from getting off of that until they've been tested after they were exposed those bulls to the cows. Sticking our nose. Yes, I want to say it too. Julia, if you, do you have anybody online or any of the other locations so we aren't taking up everybody or maybe somebody wants to throw something in there as well? I'm not seeing any hands raised at this point. Okay. And nobody at the other location. And there are, yeah, there's no other 
people at those locations. I also don't see anything in chat. Okay. I've been in the business for a little over 60 years. As near as I know, I'm, I don't claim to be an expert on trade because I've never had to deal with it. Uh, we've never had any indication we've had to, had, we haven't had a lot of open cows. I mean, uh, every percentage has been pretty normal every year. So I'm opposed to this mandatory trip testing. Uh, why should me and why should I and, and a lot of people in my shoes have to go through all of this if we don't have a problem? This idea, I think the idea of if there's a positive bull shows up, then that herd, he needs, that herd needs to be tested and the neighbors probably do. But uh, why not deal with where, the, where there is a problem or not just cover everybody, whether they got a problem or not? Yeah. I'd have to agree with Ken on this. Um, it's kind of like the criminals who get a hold of the gun, you know? The criminal keeps getting the gun, but the rest of us have to. Uh, Abide by all the new rules and regulations that come out. And uh, I think it's a mandatory test. I mean, you're talking about the commerce of it. Well, isn't that kind of what the state's doing? It's telling us we have to. They, they won't tell you where you, you have to get rid of your uh, open females, but yet they'll tell us we have to test our bulls if uh, we're in a clean area. Yeah, I just I do want, and I started this yesterday, and I didn't start with that today, and I should have. The state didn't come up with this. The state was asked to do this. And that's why we wrote this. Uh, Administrator Ferris and me, in previous tenure here, didn't come up with this on our own. So I want to be clear on that. That brings up another question. I mean, what percentage of producers want this? Has there been a poll taken on that? There have been at, at, at multiple meetings, uh, Ken, from what I understand, and you know, those associations and organizations to talk. I think, I, I believe he said it yesterday, Mr. Worthington, it's, it's, it's a 50 50. They think it at Farm Bureau, 50% in favor. But did they come yesterday and say that they I kind of got the impression that they weren't for the mandatory either? But did I misunderstand that? They don't have policy uh, supporting. Another organization that does have policy supporting the military. So we're here this week and doing what we're asked to do. So we're still listening. Do you remember or do you know the results of the mandatory? I, I, would ours, have to, I would have to dig it up, but I remember when we had a <coughs> it was 2018. I believe there were 58 in support of mandatory trip testing and 12 opposed. That petition was presented has about a hundred. It are post amendments. John, John Griggs has his hand up. Do you guys have a moment? Okay. Yep. Go ahead, John. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> first, first, let me say to to JJ and Doug, thank you guys for being there and we know that the workshop process sort of kicked this can further down the road with the timing of legislature and whatnot but it's important and we're glad you, glad you guys did it I, I i guess i'm talking to you today as president of the cattlemen's association and we are we are one of those uh askers of of trick regulation reform and at that 2018 convention that that Martin talked about, we we heard from from producers and and neighboring states how how devastating trick can be, and, and a lot of us know that already. We uh, we know that trick has the potential to impact interstate commerce, and you guys talked about that today already. We know that the current regulations maybe helped us, but aren't aren't enough. And and I think most everybody can agree on that. We are for a long-term solution that 
comes close to eradicating trick in Nevada. And for most of us, probably it's it's not conclusive in our organization either. But for most of us, that would be a mandatory test. Um, and that's a hardship on everybody, but the, for the producers that go from a 97 percent cap crop to a 70 percent cap crop, um, it's devastating. And <clears throat> for the neighboring states around us, mandatory test seems to be the way they've dealt with, successfully dealt with a trick. Thank you again, guys, for, for being there. And sorry, I'm not there with you, but we were shipping calves this morning, and I didn't figure that the Department of Ag would like agriculture spread all over your floor there. So we're doing my best by you. We're spreading it here for you, bro. <laughs> right, anything else in particular on these regulations? Do we need to sort of comment? Um, we want to make sure we cap if there's any anything in particular we're missing. Obviously, we're hearing opposition to 641. We've got that captured. Anything else? Uh, and then not just trick. Anything else in here that we're missing or we need to? Two things, JJ. One of this on exposure. You know the herd exposure. How do you? I don't see a definition for exposure. I just heard what is that? So that's a, that. So and Dr. Scott was going to get on that. That's an epidemiological study. So again, this morning uh, we were working on some of those. Um, it's not just fence line contact. I think uh, Mr. Cherry yesterday gave this comment about cattle moving uh, in and out and around. And so uh, we have discovered a couple of additional herds this morning we were not aware of that will be considered exposed. Uh, based upon movement records and talking with producers in that area. So I don't want to nail it down that, yeah, you neighbor can. So therefore, you're automatically there. Somebody else probably there. You're going to be the first place I look if you're a neighbor, obviously. But we've also got some guys doing stalker cattle. I, I see an increase in that with the sell off of cattle in the state of Nevada right now. Over the next couple of years, I think we're going to see the color mature cow herds come back up. I think we're going to see cattle coming in, come cattle going out. And so that's why I want that flexibility uh, built into the grades that whoever's sitting in this chair can actually look at that and say, wait a minute, we didn't realize that you took cattle from Mr. Paris and brought him over here, even though he's four valleys away. Okay, and then on the equine anemia regulation, the, it just seems like there's no direction there to veterinarians <coughs> as far as, I don't know, it just seems kind of vague. I mean, is that just me or? I mean, that's a cotton step, right? On the two what number three is, and what they're referring to as a cotton step. It's Greek. On the F1 and Uni Gilly. Uh, 571390 on the number three it says a positive, a complete positive identification must be made at the time of blood sample collection. No, positive identification is identification of the horse. So picture drawing. Right, but I mean, that's a cotton step. Thing, right? is, is yeah. I, I don't know that. Is that, yeah, that's, that is? That's, yeah. So it says right at the top, sub so one is cognitive test. Okay. So then, I mean, it just kind of gets real vague about if the horse fails the test or is it non negative, then the horse is disposed of as an outline. Yeah. So those are there, there are actual federal guidelines and accredited veterinarians have that. But we're, we're well aware of what happens if you have a non negative. This, this is more for importation purposes and defining the official test. It's not to define uh, by, we're not changing the code of federal regulations of what we do when they're positive. That's a CFR. So, but I mean, as far as the, the challenges that the state has gone through with regulating a positive force last summer, you guys didn't find any reason to try to fix some procedure in there? That was that was handled. There, there was, yeah. We'll, we'll talk. That's that's outside the scope. Of, uh, no, I, I, I'm we'll just talking about handling the you know if you have a positive other than that. You're good on. So what? Five seventy one six sixty seven proposed at the end number one about how we're doing, and that's why I really hit on that. It's all diseased animals. Um, the department may deny inspections or other services as directed by administrator or livestock or state quarantine officer. We want to make sure that's in the race. It 
it's in the it's in NRS. We want it in the rigs because we have to make sure that when you go in there and slap a quarantine on, you say you're not moving, you're not moving. And they didn't. Go ahead. So mine's more of a sunset deal. I I I don't like regulations to stick around for the next couple of years and solve the problem five. So is there any conversation about that? But you know, five years from now we got one ranch in Southern Nevada that's got a trip. Still everybody's testing. Is there something we're you know, not to make sure the sunset's the speed? Yeah, that's something we didn't talk about yesterday too. So that's something we're thinking about. Yeah, one more quick question here. You're going to try to trick test every bull in the state, right? Because all it takes one dirty bull to, to dirty a herd. There's, there's some ranches in the state that don't even know how many bulls they own. How are you going to police that? Well, that's why we want those tags in there. We want to know what they are. And obviously, that comes back, I think Mr. Cherry said it yesterday, uh, actually about neighbors policing neighbors and, and the industry policing itself. As far as Mr. Chari yesterday, you've been in this position for quite a while. Can you give us some input? We've heard from the department that, that you don't get the test positive results readily, that it, it's hard to enforce, that needs stricter deals. Can you tell us what you would suggest, other than I think you're just going to say mandatory trick testing? And if that's so, that's fine. But as much as you've been in these hot areas and stuff like, is there any way we can tighten this up and clean up the, the hot areas without having to go mandatory that you know of that's not being placed in these? You know, I, I hit on that yesterday and it's something I've been thinking about. If, if, I'm going to be honest, it's going to take a ton of policing uh, to do what I proposed yesterday. Um, can, can it be done? Yeah, with some more, some more force, if you will. It, and then here's what I was coming up with. I begin. You can hit me with the chair. We're going right back there. I liken it to what we're dealing with with high path avian influenza. So you got an area. That's my control area. And anybody that's around that is in my control area. So we're going to control that. Um, what we can do, and it's what we do with those diseases, permitted movements in and out of that area must be permitted by the state veterinarian. So if you're going to take cattle and you're going to move in next to Doug and you know he's positive, we're going to promote that. We're going to write it. You're going into your own risk. But now you are now exposed. And when you go home, you're going to have to test before you can go home and make sure that you're not dragging that back home. We can do it, but physically, one guy can't do it. And that's why we're, we're where we are. If, you know, if, if we had a fleet of three VMOs, veterinary medical officers in the field, could we probably do it or, or even just somebody help them track it? Yeah, but, and so it can be done. I'm not gonna say it can't, um, one one guy can't do it. And that's why we're kind of where we're at. I'm not gonna make any excuses other than that. It's just trying to police that as a director. Okay. But can I get there? Yeah, can we get there with, you're gonna test everything for five. You know, we're, we're starting to get close on these regulations and again, you know, that. The director may require additional testing within a year or for the next five years. Can we do something like that? We probably can. We're, we're here to listen and we're here and I'm, I'm thinking. Okay. If after these workshops, changes are made to the proposed regulation, what is the process forward? If so no we, changes are made, what's the process for regulation? I'll let Doug weigh in here in a second. We have one more already advertised. Um, that will be this exact same language that we looked at today. And we'll go over that and we'll receive input on that. Uh, anyone's after, so what we were talking about last night uh, is any other ones that we want to advertise, we're probably going to try to capture some of these comments and advertise those changes or recommendations for the next couple. Um, but the way the process works is once we've taken all input and then the department says, okay, this is where we're going to go. All the reds and the blues are removed. It's a new rule that is published that goes to an adoption hearing, excuse me, and that is adopted. We'll vote it down, but we'll assume that, that it is adopted. And then that goes on to the legislative commission uh, for ultimate blessing by them when it becomes code. Okay. There's still several steps. Okay, how did- um... Do you wanna to add to that? No, that's, that's it, that's, that's where it is. That's Does it have to be approved by the- 
This one is under the state quarantine officer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no. No. Okay. So who makes a decision of whether 641 stays or goes out? And when is that made? That would be the, the it'll be a, at a hearing and the ultimate decision will be the director as the state quarantine officer. With, with everything we gather, all the public comment, the input we get, then basically we take that to the state quarantine officer as the director has the final say that we're going to go forward to an adoption. It'll be made by one person with input from you guys giving suggestions. Well, and, and you're and everybody. So she reads everything that is. That's why those, that's why the ladies there are taking notes today as well. And they were, and it's all being recorded this way. So we have to go back to it. The director can go back to it. Do the vets currently receive information on where the positive bulls are in the state? Yes, they do. And I actually talked with Mr. Sproutman this morning. I got done. Um, when I came back on, and it's Friday, we had three. That list has not gone out. Because we're still working on the exposed uh, exposure herbs, and I can't put that list out until I talk to those people. It's just not right. Oh, uh, yeah. If, yeah. I have, if you haven't returned that's the phone good. call yet. <laughs> uh, well, okay, but that's a good point. Let's stick on that for a second, if you don't mind. Um, that, that's the thing. Can, in my mind, I kind of think that maybe that's something that should be in here that says you guys have to give it to the veterinarian. So that they're aware, because I would think that Boyd would want to know so that if he has a client that he's like, oh my gosh, he made her tongue. And I want, you know, I want my client to know. I believe that is if it's been it's in it's in a different section. Where it's in the statute. I think it, it's in it's it, in it fact NRS 571, it's in there. It actually calls out trick. Trick brucellosis and TB of, of how they're just taking over. And they have to be notified and can notify the report or something so that a year doesn't go by. It, <laughs> it doesn't go that far. That part isn't in there, yeah, about when. But what we try to do is monthly. So there will be one coming out at the end of this month. If we don't have any, then we're not we're not sending out zeros, but there will be one coming hopefully within the next few days as we just get to the next month. And like you say, okay, um, what do you do then if it if you can't, if you can't get a hold of me, and um, so how long do you wait before you tell them the vets? So I'll tell you, and, and it's kind of, and, and again, it'll be up to the state quarantine office. But as as the state vet, what I did this morning is I actually sent some written correspondence, and I'll give them about forty eight hours, and then I'm gonna put it out. Because the thing is, is that. I know that I have trick right because I got them tested. That's how these results we're talking about. So it's like, well, I know I've been exposed to that I have it. So I don't understand why I can't just automatically go to the vet. So I don't well, see well, the, the positive list can go. The ex, but the exposed list can't tell tell them. I, I don't want I don't want Boyd to call Jennifer and say, hey, you're on the exposed list. So she's going to call me and say, how come I didn't know I was on the damn exposed list? The, the positive list I can, but but that list is positive and exposed. It's every, it's everything. It's every herd that goes to them. That's my whole not following that story. Okay, so I'm positive. Yes. He's my neighbor. Martin's positive, and Boyd's his neighbor. So I could put out Martin and I's name today as the two positives, but I need to make sure these exposed guys are on that list for that vet to know as well. And yes. until he, and he has an answer my phone call, right. and Boyd has an answer my email. So I'm waiting, and it, it takes a few days. Right. And I'm fine with that because Boyd's going to know who the exposed person is. That being a vet, he's going to say, well, gosh, okay, Tom's on the list and John's my and client that is the neighbor to Tom. And I'll tell you, that's what, that's what we're doing in, in the, with the ranchers that are positive this week, is I've talked to all those veterinarians there, and I, that's how we're gathering that more information. I, mean, I do get a hold of the rancher and they say, oh, wait, such and such brought some stuff that got away. Okay, got it. So then that, it just keeps spreading out. And it, it takes some time, and I didn't do it all yesterday afternoon, and I'm not doing it this morning. But as soon as we're done, I'll get right back on it. That's all I did this morning. Um, as far as yesterday, also you, you talked about those test eligible bulls, and then 571 63, they are 12 months old, so that doesn't change, yeah. change to 18, correct? Yeah. That'll be 18 months. Yeah. All right. 
And then I know the neighboring states are used as a reason for mandatory trip testing, but Utah and Idaho are our only neighboring states that have mandatory statewide yearly trip testing. California, Arizona, and Oregon do not. And you mentioned New Mexico. When I talked to them, they said that they would not even come forward to the producers of uh, suggesting mandatory because it's just such a problem. So they do mandate that if when you slaughter your bulls, they have to be tested so they kind of have an idea of what. And they can't import any bulls that are tested from the higher from the doctors in the industry. Okay. Um, then I, I'd like the NAC 571667, the bottom part taken out. Using brand inspections that is, as a consequence has severe financial consequences if no cattle cannot be sold from the ranch. The same effect can be got by limiting marketing avenues. I think it's scary to have one person. I understand that the big diseases, I don't, I look at chickens, but, but the bottom part where it's just, it, <coughs> yeah, but hopefully if 641 gets taken away, then it's a new point anyway. And that's my next suggestion, take out an AC 571, 641. I want to restate that the low trick positivity rate in Nevada shows that mandatory annual trick testing is not needed and not the way to clean up the problem trick areas. What needs to be done is fix the problems in the current regulations to ensure that they are easily enforceable and that they're effective and efficient in cleaning up the positive trick areas and not burden all producers in the state with mandatory annual trick testing. And I want to thank you very much for these workshops um, yesterday and today were very informative, very um, eye-opening and stuff, so I appreciate it. The first, the first thing is a question directed to Dr. Shield and his second instead. Your opinion. The trick program in the state of Nevada works. Yes, no. Okay. Now, one of the reasons that it's not working, the discussion pretty much explained why. Okay. This is a little dark. You've got that trick here in this herd. You know, give me an example. You had a range, range, six herds of six herds of cattle in as pasture cattle. And they had some issues. Now, when those herds left, that fall, it was a pasture deal. When those herds left, they went six different directions. By the time the, event, the state investigated Invest in the state investigation started. Now these six herds have gone to Central Nevada and it's a positive herd like that. But the investigation hasn't caught up with them. Now the positive bulls are now in Central Nevada. We've got a whole new set of contact herds. Now here. If I'm the guy sitting in central Nevada, these bulls come in there unloaded next to me. They're fine. Let me say this. The people that are here in this meeting are good producers. That's why they're here. Good people are good producers. I totally respect the people that are, that are speaking against mandatory trick. The reason that I'm going to formally look at it and say that I'm in favor of mandatory trick is I don't have another answer. I don't know any other way to catch up with this business. And I appreciate that, Sam. And I hope we can find, if there's another solution, I hope we can find it. And I'm, Me too. I'm committed, I, I'm committed to looking at it. I want you to know this. If there's another way to effectively and efficiently catch up with this, this disease, I'm not against it. I'll call you at three when I come up. 
Fine, I'll be <laughs> up. <laughs> he calls me, so I'm not calling you back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's I have in my notes here for under six four four that the commuter heard issue because you guys have stated before that's one of your biggest issues of the commuter cap. And and basically, I mean, when we're talking commuter herds, that's whether they're coming from out of state or moving within districts. Only out of state commuter herds is out of state. So the example Sam's talking about is in the exactly, and that's why it falls short. When, if, if I change a district line by rights, I'm supposed to at least get them brand inspected. Do I have to trick test bulls if I went to a different district? Okay, so see if that's the problem, then why don't we there again keep it focused on the people that are doing this instead of affecting everybody across the state? So can we make it that commuter herds within the state have to be tested? And there again, they have to test twice in a year then. Because if they test when they leave local county and go down to another county, that they have to test on each end. It's back to what I was saying. If we're going to call the control zone and come in or out of it, it's got to be permitted with a permitted route. And part of that could be that. But then I look, the only thing that I'm thinking as well, but then we have like within the district, we have people, you know, I have friends. Especially down in Gardnerville, Dayton, and Washoe Valley area, that they're still within the district, so they don't have to fill anything out. And they go every year. They go to Washoe Valley or they go to Gardnerville, and so we have no, we have no idea. We don't know where they go. There's no, no reporting of it. So that was, that's the only. You know, and we're is talking there. Spot in that area? No, I'm just, I'm just using that as an example for within district because we get no notification. They don't have to report that they're moving within the district. So so if they were, you know, I mean they're they're a commuter herd as well. They're just only commuting a short distance. Once again, the low positivity rate in the last four years, close to half of the bulls in Nevada have been tested. And less than one percent have had trick. So I, I I see the commuter deal, Sam I but the numbers are not showing that this there's this explosive amount of, of, of trick bulls in the back to me. And, and just to follow up with that, Jennifer, that's where we got that information as far as the 47%. The only way we were able to compare that or try to pull that was out of the hit tax system. But we all know not everybody is compliant with hit tax, so that's not everybody. Right, but it, it's a figure. I mean, that's it's just, a that's, figure. That's double as close it, as double we can get. I mean, I, I right. manipulate the numbers where we, what you'd like to do, but still, it's a very small amount of positives. If people were having a big problem, they'd be wanting to do something. They'd be testing their bulls. If we had a problem, we'd be testing every single one of our bulls tomorrow. So, I, if if not that many people are testing, to me, it says, well, there's. Gosh, we're all living good and our cows are kind of breathing up and everything like that. If it's not, then you do something. And I, so I, like I say, the numbers are not there and you can look at it differently, but it still doesn't produce huge numbers to me. One thing that continues to concern me is the, <clears throat> the idea of people put it for or against this thing. Most of these numbers are coming out of members of the Nevada Cattlemen's Association. That's as the people whose voices are being heard. There's been a whole lot of people in the state that are not members of the association and they're not being heard from. And that's, I wonder how big of a job it would be to send out a letter to, to all the Forest Service and BLM committees, member and non member of the association, and get a, an idea. And I'm not saying majority wins, you still have to do the right thing, but I, this thing affects everybody, whether an association member or not. And, uh, I think Julia, how many emails did we send out in the small business impact state? Right. We do some somewhat of that is that's required in doing a regulation change before we could hold workshops. We had to do a small business impact statements. And so we utilized uh, you know the email list or contact list that we have at the department and sent that out. I don't know. Yeah, I have updated my email, like called the office, got online, updated it. And I still don't get any of the email updates. Like I just got my brand 
paper renewal form and it has the correct email, but I still do not get that. Did you get the brand or email though via email? No, via mail. My email is on it. I, I know with the brand renewal email, because we were talking earlier that like even my my personal email, any of the like the notices for this goes to my junk folder. And I search my junk folder and regularly check it, especially trying to keep an eye on these, and I don't get them. Okay, I'll check my junk one because I'm not getting these either. Well, yeah, I guess first let me say I, I've been in favor of semantic forecasting and for years. I was in favor of the current regulation we have. In fact, I was probably one of the last ones to come over to the mandatory, the mandatory test because I thought you already have current regulation. If you need that, it's going to work well. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. These things just kept going and then you got behind. And they're just, I mean, they're just kind of like sandwich and it's just it's like a chase your tail by the time you identify this and then you've gone in a cycle. So, and then uh, we talk to some of states. We're concerned with other states because, because of our trick problem. And they're not really wanting a lot of dramatic cattle uh, coming into their state. And so that there's some there was some of that too, but then I got to think, okay, we're not catching, we're not catching. And so we had this just listening to this discussion, what are we going to do to fix it? And so it seems like I don't know how long I've been involved with the cattle and for actively for more from 12, 15 years, we've had the same discussion. Over and over, go over a year after year after year. So finally, well, you know what? We're having these discussions. We're not gaining ground. Maybe we need to change something. So that's why I came across to the to the mandatory testing. And I can understand a lot of people. You know, we don't have a lot of cattle moving in around yet. We have a lot of cattle coming in and out of our valley now. And um, years ago, we had uh, some cattle came in. Right next door to us, out of an area that was hot, those bulls did not have trick tags. I mean, we, we've been through the whole trick thing. We've been through it once, it's been a long time ago. We do trick test our bulls every year, regardless of what that conception rate is in those cows. We've been there. I don't want to do it again. And, you know, I don't want to live in fear. And so that's that's where I'm coming from. I gotta be part of if we can get if we can do this, get the state cleaned up, thing again where I will we'll trick that people every year, regardless, just as of what what we live and operate under that. There's there's all this cavalry thing out, we don't know what's coming from where. Well when you and say we, and we have had that, we've had this thing discussion we're having here, Jennifer. I mean. Oh, and, yeah. that, and that's why it's I changed. I got, I got, so we got to change something because nothing's happening. And one of the big things was, and you alluded to it too, with the no brand inspection. And I think that when the current regulation came in, if we would have had the T that, that's proposed now with the no brand inspection, we'd be in a lot different. Because those guys that, well, I have trick, I'm fine with it, I don't care. You know, here's their, it's just spreading, it's going across their neighbors. You got somebody. You know, like Joe is trying to do the right thing, and he's got somebody next door that keeps feeding him trick bulls every year. You know, it's tearing his head off. But, but because there was no teeth, that guy that kept doing it. So when he can't get a brand inspection, he can't market anything. Maybe it, maybe it'll turn and change something. So I think if you're, you know, if you're going to do something, you got to have some teeth in it to make it hurt, or it's not. Nothing's gonna happen. We're gonna just keep going along the same path we've been going on. I don't know how many years. But once again, the numbers don't show it. And when we say, <coughs> well, let's do it for a few years and then it, it, it won't be eradicated because there's always a cow's, you, you know, nail step, you're not getting rid of it. And so it, it, once it starts, it, it, won't, it won't end. And the numbers haven't been going up. So that's why it's an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Because these yeah. numbers for the last four or five years have been the same. And we know trick is just this awful, miserable, you get it and you lose 20, 30% of your calf crop. We had it, we had it before too. We do everything, we were doing everything wrong, we changed. And now hopefully knock on wood, we, we've done changes to, to try to stop it. But 
but like I say, the numbers are the numbers. And so you would think it'd just be explosive, these, these examples. And, and I don't see it in the numbers. Well, no offense to the state, but I don't know if I trust their numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so to, so no, I mean, well, it depends on what you have to go with. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. We're talking to them, so I'll just tell you. I heard a lot of the instances, and the instances when I was president, from, from what I heard, did not match up from what you reported. So I'll give you what we have for numbers. Um, 2018, 44 positives, three suspects. 2019, 57 positives, three suspects. 2020, 67 positives, two suspects. 21, 32, two suspects. And here to date, based on this morning, is 47 and one. But percentage wise, it's basically been less than 1% for about the last four to six years. Is that correct? Yes, and it has been around the 1% under it again, but that's you know, right. to go back to we know we have over 20,000 employees in the state. We know that. Uh, but regardless of what head test, uh, head tech says, and the testing for thousand. But in 2020, it was 0.84%. Mm -hmm. So, less, and then in 2021, it cut in half to 0.41% positivity. And you, and you, and you uh, tested the most polls that year. Well, so it's cut in half in one year. The positivity rate went to less than half of a percent. Well, we'll work those numbers this year. I'll just tell you that. Well, it, it goes up and down. I, I'm not saying that it doesn't, but we do have to acknowledge that for the last three or four years, it's never been a. But that when you percent. say we'll dwarf that this year, you mean as far as the number of holes tested? The number of positives. Oh, no. We saw people not testing, so they aren't getting. We're going to do a few more over I realize this doesn't compare very well directly with this COVID thing that we've just been through. But there were draconian measures taken to kill this or stop this COVID deal. They didn't stop it, but it about killed the economy of the country. And that's, I'm just wondering if the, if the uh, end justifies the means or if, if the, the means will even get the job done. Right? Just seems like overkill. Are you going to comment on the actual regulations? I'll turn it back to Doug for public comment. I would like to um, make another comment on the for the brand inspection. Um, I would like to see more definition because it just where it, you know it's well it's up it's up to the director and the administrator to determine if I'm not going to get my brand inspection. And I do worry about, like I said in my comments letter yesterday, I mean, if I don't find out until the day I've got the cattle in because the brand inspector has gotten an email from you guys saying, hey, you can't go to Cooper's anymore or whatever, you know, um, and that happens on the day of, and then the inspector calls me and says, sorry, I know I was scheduled to come out there, but I just got an email. And that's only because that's happened in the past. And so it just it's I think there's got to be some definition in there because if it's written, if it's put in the way it's written here, I think a lot of producers are gonna be in some pickles with cattle and corrals. And then we gotta worry about buyers not when we talk about buyers not wanting Nevada cattle, I mean I would think that that's gonna be a huge one. You know, truckers coming to ship out of the state. I'm probably as good as anybody to be responsible for using make that as a pen. Because there was a lot of discussion four or five years ago about okay, let's have a five thousand dollar fine or this or that or the next thing. And in my mind, and, and, and admittedly, there has to be very good communication between the department. And the producer, if they are on a hold, either, either exposure or infection, there has to be that really solid communication back and forth. If you don't test your bulls within eight months, which would be, I don't know if you're missing that part of the definition or not, 
if you're a firm holder and you don't do anything to comply within eight months, then this possibility comes up. Now, why am I, you know, refusing service to send a department person out for a brand inspection? It's way easier than going out and trying to confront and collect a five thousand dollar fine. <laughs> you know, I, I just it's just something you know, okay, if, if you choose not to comply to get off whole order, there will be a consequence, you know. And it, there's a service that's, that's provided by the department and to withhold that service, and everybody knows up front that, that is that is the consequence. Like I say, that that's what went through my mind when I was one of the ones that helped recommend this as opposed to fines and any other things that came up with. And I realize it's, it's very it's very potent, but if, I think if there if someone knows full well up front, well in advance, eight months in advance, that this could be a consequence. I I would hope we would never get in a situation where we find out that morning and totally unaware that they can't send a, a brand inspector out. But that's under a mandatory trick test, right? I mean, no, no, that's just under any, any whole order, whether it be with the old rules or the new ones. This this is a compliance bill based on not not mandatory, just based on if you are on the whole order. And that's I get that's you're saying that that that's what this is based on, or is this saying that, hey, I can't think that's say where, the rest right? That's where I, I, oh, I that's what it's based on. Yeah. yeah, but it's also the second part is basically refers to six. Will, will be used in 641, right? If 641 goes away, but number two well, goes away, this, so this is that is correct? Right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to. Be. I mean, we're See, where does it say that, um, <coughs> on a hold order a brand will be taken away? Because basically it says a hold order, a brand will be taken away. Oh, uh, uh, number one. Number one. It says hold order. Number two so is. Number two, two is. Well, it refers yeah. to the mandatory. So, well, and that's that, the, the way it's written that way is because we have the mandatory written in. So, that's how you connect. So, back, that's right. how you connect back to it. But I think, I mean, I don't know what, if, if what you're saying is we, we don't have this ability right now, even. And that's that's why we are where we are. That's why JJ calls people, right? Constantly and takes them down, or the people Neil talked about the 15 years on. But I think it's a the video coming from uh, the producers and uh, especially the department to make sure that communication is there that is well known what the con consequence will be at what point so someone's not surprised you know and I know you've had some situations where some of these kind of things came up unexpectedly and there wasn't good communication between the department and the producer so I, I understand why you're concerned about it. But this, we have to really make sure that that communication is out there. And I want to say that that I'm just totally against mandatory trick testing, but I am definitely for strengthening these regulations. And if it, if it means taking away brand inspections and stuff like that, I will say fine. And if, if somebody has trick next test, we'll, we'll trick test every single bolt. I totally think we need to clean up these these hot areas and I totally will be behind any kind of enforcement that, that ensures that kind of stuff. And I will say that this isn't the end of it because about 15 years ago at the country club in Fallon, I sat next to the state vet and I said everything that she said, everything to him. I said, you can't ride regulation against these trends under whole order. It's tough enough that I won't make the motion to support it. And we're here we are. So as far as those herds are on whole order, we're going to have that discussion. Why is that some, something? The agency is doing something about that. Irregardless, is that what do you what do you want us to do with the current rates on you? Well, I told you, I don't, I'm not in love with the mandatory trick test, but I can tell you, I think that we need the herds that are under whole order. We need to administratively counsel those people to a point that they come out of a whole order. But, but we don't have that ability right now with the, with the well, I, I, you know, and I think that we need to adopt it. Like I say, I, hell, it was 15 years ago, you know, in Fallon, that, that everything Jennifer said, I said to him, 
and then I dropped the ball. It's really all this whole meeting is as much my fault as anybody's. Because if I had to bring it up every time I saw it, that we need to work on that, well, maybe we got this cleaned up and JJ would say, oh no, but there aren't any nerves that are on hold. Those are all cleaned up. This is just time. So, you know, that's if there's a guy that's responsible, maybe it's me. But we're not going down that road, you know. I'm looking at the end of my lifespan, so we're gonna try and get it you know, cleaned up in the bucket this time. Here we are. I'm not supposed to claim it. That's right. <laughs> I just wonder why this meeting isn't at the country club. <laughs> it happened 15 years ago, we changed it. <laughs> Guys, here's here's this is a nice discussion. Here's why we're trying to figure out how to get these stories They're totally in support. Well managed battery. They're totally in support of, in, of enforcement on the guy that's got trick that moves in next to okay. Here's where it becomes an almost impossible for the department to chase this. The guy comes next to Goopers and we on those those that are not good tested in the shop. Bulls will be bulls, right? Now we got issues. Okay, he knows them, he's gone. High intensity bulls, he spread it all over the country. It's happened. He spread it around. You don't have any way to test those bulls. But how do you have it to if it's mandatory? If he gives it to me, I get it. I say JJ Thomas said Thomas the one. So you're following Tom around, but mandatory, you're following Tom around also. How how will mandatory be any easier or effective in enforcement for Tom that's moving all around um than right now? Then I mean just doing it when when you're following after he leaves my place. This, this is kind of how I would envision it. More bulls. End of discussion. End of investigation. You know, the bulls trick this. That way you're ensured that when he comes in, that bull's been trick this next to you. And how do you make sure Tom does? I got a problem. That's the same with the regulation come in. That's what the bottom board of the has to do. I mean, that, that's what it is. That's what it's saying. So the mandatory after, trick after, testing. After a while, I can't tell anything. That you take your around. brand inspection if you don't mandatory trick test. I don't know if that's too so. Yeah, no, I think that's way, way, I've said before, way, <laughs> way government overreach. And, and you're dealing with everybody who doesn't have a problem. You're putting masks on everybody. You're testing everybody who feels good about pointing. So basically, it comes back to this commuter herd. That's the issue, not the people. And and granted, every one of us can have a commuter herd come to next to us. And they will say, well, it's in the same district. I think what you need to focus on is the commuter herd and figure out how you can make that where, hey, if I'm going to start moving my cattle around the state or even within the county, I mean, that's yeah, we do. I you know, I've got yearlings that go up to where I live. It's, it's almost 100 miles apart. I mean, and so work on the commuter herd issue. Is there, there's still resident herds um, of neighboring ones. Okay, what's the trick? Herds are a I mean, it is that's part of it, but there's still that. There's this that, that resident herd is there. there but if you get it from him they have to test that's the beauty of this every single year so yeah. when you get that's that positive hey there we go resident herd you got it in the mix yeah you got it in us i hear what you're saying <laughs> but i think the guys on the department plan yeah. but there has not been that influx from from the department to come in and say hey you guys need to do this i mean everybody's just going along just as they can be and uh, 
because we've lived on the edge for a long time. We've been, and we've been careful, but it's, it's, I mean, the fence is it's still there. It's still not a lot of it, but it's still there. But because they have to have that enforcement from the current regulations, they just still go on. No, but you you were taking care of the problem, and and and, and everybody takes. No, it is. You're, you're, you're right, but there's still that. We've been okay with our pet. Other people, yeah, you know, but they're they're still they're still good. We've just been like we haven't had we haven't mixed, I guess. So we've been able to to stay true. But I mean, it's we're we're the biggest mistake, I guess. So I mean, that's. Yeah, that, I just, that, I that's, I, that's part of, and that's basically, Jennifer, and that's yeah. one of the reasons kind of why I finally, I, I got tired of, got tired of living that way. You know, we're just year to year deal, and we're going to get hammered one of these days, and somehow we need to change something. And and I wasn't, it wasn't coming from the state. So what, so what are we going to do? We just, we need to make, we need to do something different. And so that, no and mandatory is going to ensure that, and it's just government overreach. Yeah, I just like I say, I just think government overreach for people who don't have any problem with that. Fix the problem. I'll, I'll be the first to be right there helping fix the problem. If, but, yeah. but other people no. don't need, they don't want to be fixed. They're no, good. I mean, I've had the same discussion with Kathy for years. And when you get government to get to the point where, you know, I don't know, but. At some point, we need, to, we need to make a change. Well, I, 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 I hear it. I mean, I hear, I hear it because most of those discussions had that same same discussion you had I've had with myself. John would like to speak. We I, we have one more here, Julia. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say I agree so 100 percent with Jennifer. We've heard a lot of loud voices on both sides of this thing. I can't even imagine. The hornet's nest is going to be broken when people all over the state find out they can't get brand inspection if they're not testing the book. Boy, I'll tell you, you better be ready, be ready to have a good phone bank. Right, I'll be going in the workshop. I know, yeah. But when they find out I can't get brand inspection because I'm not testing everybody. Okay, Julie. John. Thank you guys. Roughly two hours in, you, you've heard a lot. You've got a lot to work with. One, one final maybe question and thought from me. Um, Jennifer's, Jennifer's point about 1% is, is a good one. Of that, of that 1%, uh, JJ or Doug, do you have an idea how many in a year are unique herds? Is there any clue to that? Unique herds? Is that what you said? So, so like a, a new herd, it, it's not, we know it's not, we know it can't be the same 1% every year. Year in, year out, how many of the 1% might be unique herds? New, new, new to that year. I'm looking at my data. For Any idea? The last two. And, and I, I brought this up yesterday. John, what, what we tend to see is it skips about two or three years and then those herds come back. And the reason why is they test, they get off hold and then they stop testing for two years and then they hit again uh, in that area. So um, year to year, we've seen a couple of entities have been on the list for the last two or three years. Um, that they, they obviously are a problem, um, but I'm going to say 25% of those bulls last year were, or 25% of the positives last year were from a similar entity the year before. 75% were new. Um, I will tell you that what I'm seeing this week in researching the data, they have not been on a hold order uh, since fall of 18, and they're going to be back on fall of 22. And they haven't tested last three. That makes for that, that makes for complicated math that I can't do. But so so maybe in in twenty years there's fifteen percent of hers infected. Yeah, that'd be fair, man. That'd be fair. That that's why we're here. It's 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 not the it's not the one percent. It's the fifteen percent. 
that that's why we're here and hopefully we can get to a solution thank you guys all right i think we're good to up to that point with our discussion so um at this time we'll go ahead and move on to uh, the official public comment section if anybody has has public comment Julie, do you have any? I don't have any hands raised at this time. Yeah. No? Okay. I thought you were raising your hand. All right. Um, then without having any public comment, I would like to thank everybody for their participation. Um, NDO, take the comments from today under consideration along with any written comments received during this rulemaking process. Um, Again, thank you for attending the workshop and your participation, and the workshop is adjourned at 12.56 p.m.